Hi there, good morning everyone. My name is Matt. I'm Maddie. And happy Easter. Uh, we don't know where you're watching this from, but you are really, really welcome to our Sunday service on Easter Sunday. Matt, you even dressed up. I did, thanks very much. Do you like it? Yeah. Um, what makes this even better is the fact that I'm 100% watching this in my pyjamas right now, which is the best. So I don't know what's going to happen when this lockdown finishes, but I'm going to find it really hard to not wear my pyjamas to church every single Sunday. <laughs> so Matt, why don't you tell us what's happening today? Yeah, so this morning we've got some worship, we've got a retelling of the Easter story, some games, um, even some surprise guests along the way, and a creative talk from Esther. Amazing. Before we get started with all of that, though, um, we're going to pray together. And what's going to happen is you'll see some instructions on the screen, you'll hear my voice, and you'll be getting involved with this prayer at home. So let's pray together before we start our service. Dear Father, this is the best day of the year, the best day of all time. For on Easter Day, we find that Jesus, who was dead, is alive again. Yes, Jesus is alive. And we see his promise that those who put their trust in him will not be swept away by death, but they shall have eternal life, because Jesus is alive. Make us willing and able to change our ways of thinking and speaking and doing into Easter ways, because Jesus is alive. So that how we behave may bear out what we believe, and so that Christ's new creation may become in us not just a hope, but a fact, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Amen.
providing us with some worship this morning. That truly was amazing. Um, and now for some notices. Well, actually, before we get to the notices, a quick explanation of where we are and why this is important. Yeah. Right, the world famous Albert's Place <laughs> building might be a bit of a stretch, but we're here nonetheless. And when we come here, we're always reminded of our Albert's Place Youth Club, which we really oh. miss at the moment. We're normally there every Thursday night. So if you're a parent of a young person that's ever been, or if you are a young person and you're watching today, know that you're loved, we miss you, we're very much looking forward to coming back. But in the meantime, whenever we're here in the building, it brings out our silly side a little yeah. bit because we're youth workers and that's what we do. And at the moment we're all cooped up at home. So when we come into the building, sometimes silly things happen. So much talk. Oh, too much. My Way too much. word. Oh, but it's so so tasty. Well, I promised uh, that we would have a little bit of silliness, and so to help me deliver the notices, I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine. Why don't you come on in and share this very small camera frame with your large head? Good grief. Okay, right. So um, the notices this week. Um, first, well, first of all, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Amazing, thanks very much. Um, so, uh, it's really great to have you here with us. Um, so, in terms of the notices, the first thing is a reminder um, to keep checking the website because there's lots of interesting content on there. Have you enjoyed reading anything in particular? Yeah, no, it's really good stuff. Yeah. As well as there being loads of really great content on the website that we want you to follow, we realise that actually that's no substitute for our time together. And so we're thinking about ways that we can uh, improve our services. And one of the things that we want to do is uh, to try taking communion together. Have you ever taken communion? Yeah, quite as well. Yeah. So next week uh, for the service, please make sure that you attend the service uh, ready to take communion. So that means whether uh, it's uh, you know actual wine and bread, or whether it's juice and a packet of crisps, or in your case, no, not me. Uh, whatever it is, uh, please come to next week's service at 10:30, uh, ready to share communion. We're really looking forward to doing that with you. The final thing, um, apart from checking out the website and being ready next Sunday for communion. Um, is Wednesday morning early prayer. Uh, it's been going really, really well. We would love to see you there. Do you reckon you could wake up at that time to, to pray with everyone? Yeah. Good. Great. Okay, so we will see you there. Um, I don't know if this guy's coming, um, but it'd be amazing if you want to come to early morning prayer on Wednesday. Uh, we would absolutely love to see you there. And look, there's Caleb and Abby. Let's see. Oh yeah, that was a noise. Mum, we got our Easter egg hunt this year. Yeah, and have real chocolate. Look, these are the Easter eggs we used every year, and they've got the story of the Bible on the back. But look what I found that Mum had in the cupboard. As part of my exercise for today, I'm dropping some off at friends. Cash! Yeah. This is I can't ready yet! Where is it? Yeah. I'll read it. In the beginning, God made the world, all the animals, he made the people. He looked at everything he had made and said, it is good, I'm glad I made it. Got it? Got it! Number two. The people and God lived together in a beautiful land called Eden. God told the people not to eat the fruit from the tree in the middle, but they did. Now the world was spoiled. God tried to help the people by giving them special rules, sending special messengers called prophets, but no one listened. God missed being special friends with the people, so he soon sent his son, Jesus, into the world. Jesus was born a baby in a stable, but he soon grew up and told the people how to live and how they could know God. Yeah, what yeah. The, no, what about the rest of the story and the other eggs? Oh, Mum told them to need to drop them off at Hamilton from the Cravers. What? But that means there's no chocolate! No! Girls, 
Great news, we can have a treasure hunt after all. Yes. Kezi has delivered some eggs and we've hidden them in the garden. Who wants a treasure hunt? Me! Where are my eggs? Look, there's one in the tree. Five. Some people didn't l like what Jesus said. They wanted to be in charge, not God. They killed him and he died on a cross. His body was put in a cave with a big rock over the door. There it is, popped up in the trampoline. Oh yeah. Jesus' special friends went to visit the tomb. When they got there, it was empty. An angel was sitting inside. He said, he is not here. God has raised him from the dead. This means that Jesus is alive and he has created a special way for us to know God. Kathy, where is the egg? The egg is somewhere behind me. Okay! Well, good morning and happy Easter. So I'm in my garden this morning because this last week I have given all the children a bit of a, a challenge. They've had a creative and a prayer challenge every single day set to them and they have done amazingly well. I'm going to show you some of their beautiful creations now. So what they did was they started right at the beginning with um, paradise and the Garden of Eden but then the snake came along and everything got messed up and then later in the week they looked at Jesus coming and how he taught them about growing um, in their lives and he's a good gardener and they looked at the parable of the sower and then we also looked at how Jesus wants to we, we're the branches and he's the vine and how he's going to grow good fruit in our lives. And then on Friday, we kind of finished up with the Easter story and we looked at um, Jesus coming into Jerusalem and what happened in Jerusalem and his death on the cross. And then, of course, this morning they finished their garden with Jesus. The tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. So I hope you enjoy their pictures. Oh, thank you so much to all the kids and um, people that helped put that video together. We really enjoyed it. And now it's time for a game with our very own Dave Hathaway. I literally cannot wait for this. <laughs> okay, welcome to the Easter Task Meester show. So today we have a very special panel of contestants. We have Mr. Pete Mansfield. Hello. We have Miss Aggie Douglas. And we have Mr. Paul Ip. If we go straight on with task number one. Task one. Do something spectacular with an egg. The most spectacular thing done with an egg wins. So, without any further ado, we are going to go and see what spectacular thing you did with an egg. Now, I'm going to start with Mr. Paul Epps. Easter rig challenge. I have an egg. I've got a dog. I want the dog to hold the egg without breaking it. Is, is this what you would call spectacular, is it, Paul? <laughs> is yeah. it really? I mean, I will say, if the, if, the, if the task was to find the cutest dog and put it on a video and give it an egg to hold, then I would say excellent who doesn't like who, okay. doesn't, but, who doesn't like cute dog videos? Sure. In I this mean, time, we need cute dog videos. Okay, okay. Well, well, well done, Paul. I wonder if the other two have anything that's more spectacular than that. <laughs> Shall we see? Right, let's go with, uh, who should we go with next? Let's go with Mr. Pete Mansfield. Here is the egg. Now I have a son in San Francisco in America. 
Hello. And I am going to uh, reach across the Atlantic Ocean and the continent of North America in order to smash this egg on his forehead. Here we go. Right, here we go. His forehead. Success. Oh, well done, well, P. I'm, I'm liking that. Um, I mean, uh, what more? It was, it was an egg. It was spectacular. Uh, you travelled by map, which we all know is the, the quickest way to travel across the Atlantic. Um, so, yes, excellent. Well done. Excellent. See, Paul, that was spectacular. So, right, let's see what Abby has come up with. I decided that the most, well, given that I'm trapped in isolation, I thought the most spectacular thing I could do with my egg was send it on a journey. So I got in contact with my friends and family across the country and beyond and sent them an egg. And, and was it the but same? It did come back and hit us in the end. Was, was, it, was it the same egg, Abby? Um, as far as I know, yes, it was the same egg. I threw okay. it out the window and it Excellent. came back and hit us again. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm happy with that as an explanation. And, and uh, uh, that, that last shot looked a little bit painful. Is there any injury? Yeah, there was involved? some blood involved. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, maybe we should suggest to the children watching, don't do that at home. So, okay, so excellent. Well, let's, let's award some points to that first task. Uh, I think it's fairly obvious, Paul, you get one point for that. Um, <laughs> Pete and Abby, I, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, transatlantic travel for both eggs. Uh, there was injury involved in both eggs. I'm liking that. Pete, I, I'm, I'm enjoying the special effects. Um, Abby, I, I did like the human chain aspect. Um, you know what, I'm actually, I think I'm going to award you both three points. So here's the scores after round one. Paul with one point, Pete with three points, Abby with three points. Excellent. Right. Let's move on to task two. Task two. Bring the most eastery thing in your house. Most eastery thing in your house wins. Well, as we said, there are some benefits to pre-recording services, one of them being that I'm definitely in my pyjamas right now, watching myself look all nice, like this. The other thing that's quite interesting about pre-recording is we have no idea what just happened in that Task Meester Challenge. So, whoever won, congratulations. congratulations. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed contributing. Thank you to Dave Hathaway, who put that film together. You're awesome. Due to a technical glitch, we do not have a recording for the transition into Esther's talk, but that's definitely what's happening next. So, without further ado, here's Esther Green. Good morning and happy Easter. Over the last few weeks, many of us have been making pictures of rainbows to put in our windows. And if you haven't been making them, you may have seen them when you've been out on your walks. Or you might have seen them in the news as they've been reported, rainbows appearing across the world. And the news has reported that these rainbows are being painted to cheer people up in tough times as a reminder to stay positive, as a message of solidarity. Now symbols are really important for us as humans. 
And today on Easter Sunday, I'd like us to think about four symbols from the Bible, starting with the rainbow and ending with the resurrection, which we are celebrating today. The rainbow takes us right back to the beginning of our Bibles, to the story of Noah in the book of Genesis. And the rainbow in this story is a symbol of a hope and a promise, a promise made by God to Noah and to the whole of creation. But to understand this promise more fully, we need to think about and understand another symbol from the story of Noah, and that is the flood. Now in the ancient world, the sea was something to be feared. We tend to like the sea in our modern age and think of it as something beautiful. But in ancient times, it was seen as something ominous, sinister and threatening, a force that could undo the created order. And the biblical writers use this concept from the ancient world, this idea that the sea represented chaos and destruction. So in the story of creation, on day two, God restrains the sea, putting it in its place. And in the book of Job, when God is describing who he is and what he has done in creation, he says this, Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the cloud its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed the limit for it and set its doors and bars in place? I said, This far you may come and no further. Here is where your proud ways waves halt. And it's a very important concept that in the creation story that God contains and directs the sea in such a way that its great power is harnessed to serve the needs of the created order. So back to the story of Noah. The Bible says that God saw that the world had gone bad, that the choices that mankind had made had led to great wickedness and corruption. And so God stays his hand and releases once more the chaos of the waters of the sea. So we get the flood. But God also acts to rescue humanity and creation through the man Noah. God tells Noah to build an ark that will rescue him from the flood, from the judgment, the chaos that mankind's wrong choices had led to. And after the flood, when the ark comes to rest on the mountain, and Moses and his family and the animals come out, they sacrifice to God. And as a result of this, God says to Noah and his family, I will now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you. I will establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is a sign of the covenant I am making with you. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds of the earth and a rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. God's promise to Noah and to the whole of creation was that he would never again release the sea in judgment of man's sin. But sin is still a problem. You only have to follow the story of Noah and his family a bit further, and this soon becomes evident. But God remembers his promise, and as the Bible story unfolds, we begin to see his plan of rescue in different ways. It is a bit of a reoccurring theme in the Bible, God rescuing his people by delivering them from the sea. So first we have Noah, the first story of rescue. And then we have the story of Moses and the people of God who escaped from Egypt through the Red Sea. After Moses, we have Joshua leading the people through the water of the Jordan into the Promised Land. And then of course we have Jesus who came and in a boat on the Sea of Galilee spoke to the storm, to the waters, and calmed them. This event is said to be one of the clearest declarations of Jesus, his deity in the New Testament. 
It is Yahweh who said at the dawn of time, This far you shall come, but no further. And it is the Son who can stand and remind the Sea of Galilee of the same. And this leads us to our third symbol, the cross. Because in Jesus, God's rescue plan is fully revealed and comes to completion. Theologians speak of many parallels between the ark and the cross. Both are symbols of salvation, both made out of wood, the same type of wood probably. And the pitch that was used to cover the ark to make it waterproof is likened to the covering of Jesus' blood over our sins. In fact, the same word is used in the Hebrew for pitch as is for the concept of atonement. The story of the cross is of Jesus, the man who had done nothing wrong, being crucified for our sins. The Bible says that it was about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain in the temple was torn in two and Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his last. Jesus took on our sin, our wrong choices, our wickedness. In 1 Peter, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. And Peter goes on to speak of Noah. He said, In the ark, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolises baptism that now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we come to our final symbol. Jesus' body was placed in a tomb. And his followers waited, scared and afraid to see what would happen next. Luke 24 says this. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found a stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. The resurrection. We have many symbols of the resurrection, but the one that I like best is the symbol of the sunrise. A new dawn coming when those women went to the tomb and discovered that all had changed. And in the resurrection, we have hope. Hope of three things. The first is a very personal hope to the followers of Jesus, one that was life-changing for them. It meant that Jesus was with them. For Mary, meeting the resurrected Jesus in the garden brought comfort in her distress. For the disciples waiting in the upper room in a place of fear, the resurrected Jesus brought peace. For Cleopas on the road with unanswered questions, the resurrected Jesus brought reassurance and understanding. And to Thomas with his doubts, the resurrected Jesus brought belief. The resurrection promises us that whatever we experience in life, we can go through it with the knowledge that God is with us. The second promise of the resurrection is that there is victory over death. The resurrection did not just bring the presence of Jesus into the lives of his followers. It brought them to a conviction that death was no longer to be feared. In our world and in our culture at the moment, we are suddenly having to think about death, where we've always put it off, focusing instead on enhancing our lives and extending our experience of being alive. Yet all of a sudden, death seems to be something that we must face. To Jesus' followers, who had once fled in the face of death, 
despite their protestations that they would follow Jesus into it. The encounter with the resurrected Jesus changed all that. Of course, death is painful whilst we are facing it on this earth. But the resurrection of Jesus tells us that there is so much more. And that leads us to our third promise. The resurrection promises us eternal life. The book of Revelation speaks of this eternal life as a new heaven and a new earth. Revelation 21 says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. That little line, and there will be no longer any sea, speaks of the completion of God's promise. No longer is there any threat of chaos and destruction undoing the created order. No longer is there judgment over sin, for that has been paid for. And there's another little picture in Revelation of the throne room, and in it we see once again the rainbow. Revelation 4 says that the one who sat on the throne had the appearance of jasper and ruby, and a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled his throne. Once more we see the symbol of salvation, the symbol of the completion of God's promises. Mankind not destroyed, but renewed, forgiven, made whole, and dwelling with God in the new heavens and on a new earth. This is what we as Christians look forward to. And as we live, knowing the presence of God with us, living in freedom from the fear of death, with the hope of eternal life, we also find that that future world breaks into the now. N.T. Wright says that people who believe in the resurrection, in God making a whole new world in which everything will be set right at last, are unstoppably dedicated to work for that new world in the present. When we live as signs of hope, when we act in ways that don't give in to fear, but remember mercy, kindness and grace, we are bringing God's future kingdom into our present lives. The world needs to see us live our lives at the moment under the very real hope that the resurrection gives us. So let our rainbows be our lives shining as a sign of the assurance that we have. And in the words of the writer of Hebrews, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Amen. Cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all
But a massive thank you uh, to Esther for what she's shared and to the Roderick family again for leading us in worship. Let's uh, take a moment to pray now as we reflect on what's been happening this morning and what God has been saying. Father God, we want to thank you for today. We thank you for uh, the truth uh, of your word and how it speaks to us uh, even now in our homes where we are. Lord, we thank you for the different things that have been shared and said and done. We thank you that we've been able to, to laugh together and to be encouraged. And Lord, the things that you've said and done in our hearts, would you cement those things there? Help us to hold on to them, to, to cherish them. And Father, help us to carry them through this week. Father, we thank you for Easter. We thank you for this day. We celebrate that your son died and rose again. And that gives us hope, hope for the future, uh, hope that our past is taken care of and hope that you're with us today. Uh, God, be with us this week. Uh, with us individually, but with our families and our loved ones too. And we pray this all in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you guys for joining us this morning and a huge thank you to everyone who contributed a video to this morning's service. It's been amazing to spend time with you virtually from our own homes um, and to celebrate Easter together. Uh, please keep an eye on the website to stay connected. And if you'd like to join the Wednesday morning prayer at 7 a.m., do email admin at thecommunitychurch.net. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Closing sequence. What take are we on? I don't know. Five. Let's just say five. Closing sequence. Take five. Uh, please email admin at thecommunitychurch.net for the link. It's, yeah. Oh my goodness. No, nowhere near. Um, right, hang on. Goodness me, I might need to use a wide angle. Oh, yeah, that's good, the leaning. The leaning? I've ditched my nose, but I, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right? Sure. Okay. Uh, take one. Of a hundred. Of a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing already? Uh, what's the big deal? Nothing, you pause. You have to you have to you have to pause so that you can like cut to the shot. Okay. Right, three, two, one, catch. Honestly. <laughs>